As we continue our study of derivatives, um, it's important to, to really understand what a derivative is, and it's a rate of change. As you learn about derivatives, when you're, you're in an xy coordinate plane setting, that just means slope. All right, your independent variable is x, your dependent variable is y, and so the slope is how fast the height of this line is changing. At a place like this, for every step you take to the right, it's going up by, I don't know, one and a half, maybe. Um, at a place like this, for every step we take to the right, the line's going down by a smaller amount. All right, so um, the rate of change on a graph is just the slope. But more importantly, we want to talk about this rate of change in a model situation or in a word problem situation. Now, um, probably um, as many as all other applications combined, the, very, the, the most common application of a derivative has to do with position, velocity, and acceleration. Because anything that moves, you can apply this to. Um, if you just search for applications of derivatives, um, you're going to find mostly a questions similar to this one. This question came off an old, old AP exam, and it's just a good standard velocity type equation, um, type of problem. So we're going to do this one just to um, get our feet wet, and then we'll do one that's not about velocity, just so you'll realize that there are other applications. Okay, so a particle moves along the x-axis. The position is given. Sometimes position is given as s, in this case it's given as x. It's moving on the x-axis, so x is appropriate, but this is just, um, we're just talking about motion moving back and forth, basically al along a number line. Um, and this is its position at any time t. For what value of t is the velocity of the particle zero? So the most important fact, and the one that's used in every single one of these problems, is that the velocity is the derivative of position. All right, it's a rate of change. So if your position is changing rapidly, your velocity is quick. Um, it's, it's high. If your position is changing slowly, then this is a small number, a number closer to zero. My velocity is 2t minus 6. And the question is, when is this velocity equal to zero? So all I want to do is set this function equal to zero, as you will do lots and lots of times, and solve for t. So I'm going to move my 6 to the left and divide by 2, and I get 3 equals t. So the velocity is 0 at time t equals 3. Good standard rate of change problem where the function is position, the derivative is velocity. Now let's look at another option. Okay, so let's make that a little smaller so it'll fit. Okay, so what we have is fuel leaking out of a gas tank. The tank is 75 liters and it's sprung a leak so there is gas spewing out of this fuel tank. And what we're given is a, a function for V. And Now this V is not the same velocity, this is V for volume. This V function tells us how much gas is in the tank as time ticks along. Now the reason this is a derivative question is because the, the follow-up is how fast. When you see rate or how fast or speed, when, the, when you see something about the rate at which something's happening, that's an indicator of derivative. The derivative is a rate of change. So if I, I don't want to know how much fuel is in the tank when t equals 5. I want to know how fast gas is spewing out of the tank when t equals 5. That's why it's a rate of change. Okay, and for various reasons, it might be leaking out at a different rate based on how much time has passed. Maybe there, if there's more gas in it, there's more pressure forcing it out. Maybe it's leaking out slower and slower or faster and faster. I don't really know, but I've got a function that tells me how much is left. So if I take the derivative of that function, it will tell me how fast fuel is leaking. All right, but the key here, how fast should, should be screaming to you, take the derivative, because that's what a derivative is. V prime of t. Now, the derivative of this function. Let me just, before I start, rewrite it, just because this text is bothering me. 1 minus t over 24 squared. Now, the derivative. I'm going to drop my 2 and multiply it by the 75, so it's going to be 150. 
1 minus t over 24. Remember not to change what's in the parentheses yet. Now this is now to the first power, which you can either write or leave off. Now the chain rule, I need to multiply by what's inside the parentheses, the derivative of what's in the parentheses. So the derivative of 1 minus t over 24 is negative 1 24th. All right, that's just, t over 24 is just a constant 1 24th being multiplied by t, and it's negative, so negative 1 24th uh, takes care of the chain rule. Now, how fast is it leaking when t equals 5? This function is how fast it's leaking at any time I want. I just happen to want t equals 5. So my answer is going to be what I get when I put 5 into this equation. All right, so I'm going to go to the calculator, which you won't be able to see, so just bear with me for a moment as I type this in. And I get negative 4.95. So a couple things. First of all, the units. This is how fast the volume is changing. All right, my volume is in liters, and any rate needs to have a time period on the bottom. And I don't think I said specifically. Um, so if t is 5, this could be, let's just go with seconds because usually that's the most common one. Let's go with liters per second because we want units and even though, let's, let's just add 5 seconds to the units so that we know um, what time period we're dealing with. Secondly, why is this thing negative? All right, can you answer that question? Why did our result turn out to be negative? A rate of change if the amount is decreasing, should be negative. Okay, so think about that. It's, um, this is, the V is how much gas fuel is in the tank. So how fast fuel is leaking um, tells me that the value is decreasing at 4.95. If we were dumping gas into the tank, we would have gotten positive 4.95. All right, but this is a leak, so the volume of gas in there is decreasing, which makes it make sense that we got 4.95. So that's all that's going to be in this video. I just wanted to um, remind you the most common application of rate of change is velocity, position, acceleration type question, but it could come, it could stand for anything. These are not as common because these functions are not things you can typically know in the real world, but um, you will come across these from time to time and just think rate of change, take the derivative.